successor agency. Uh, let the record show that all council members are present. Um, today we're going to be having a workshop on the Clear Lake Consensus Building, uh, or on the Clear Lake, on the Council Consensus Building. Um, so uh, we have uh, um, Steve Brooks here who is going to be leading us in our workshop. So Can I make a request? Maybe speak up a little louder, please. Okay. So we're going to yell? Okay. So, all right. Or you yes. could, or if everybody yeah. sits on that front, it's going to be a good idea. Why don't everybody move forward? Could everybody please move forward? So we're not yelling at the top of our mouths. Yeah. 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 Her back is, yeah. she's speaking that way, and therefore the voice is going that way. Okay. <laughs> we're going to open up a special meeting at the Clear Lake City Council to read about the successor agency. Uh, the record is showing that all council members are present. Uh, we are having a workshop uh, today uh, for the city council uh, consensus building, and Steve Brooks is going to be leading that workshop, so I'm going to be turning it over to Steve here uh, for him to um, begin our workshop for us. Thank you. Uh, my name is Steve Brooks. I've uh, been in various parts of public service pretty much uh, since I got, uh, since I was in high school, in fact. I was, uh, worked as a fireman for Kelseyville. I worked as a paid fireman when I was in college. I'm on a fire board, so I've been elected officials. And I've also worked for a, a city. So I've kind of seen things from all different directions, um, how best to uh, build consensus and then move the, the ball down the field in the direction that the policymakers want. And that involves getting adequate input from their constituents, getting the actual facts, they don't know the facts, to get the information in enough time to ask questions or to get additional information. So what, what I've tried to do is to um, hand out everybody just today a little seven questions. And they focus on just general areas that they, how they view their role as a city council member. So what I wanted to do is go through those. We'll start with one and then we'll go through. I'm not going to basically say who said what, but I'm just going to read the five responses. So then you can, and then we can have a little discussion about that. Uh, we'll be more one to the next. We don't need to go all through the seven, but it's just an idea to see if we can move forward in communication. One of the things that I learned, and I see uh, it's been in the audience, we went to a uh, uh, mediation training about seven years ago. Uh, it's the key. Oh, the key, OK. <laughs> My mistake. Anyway, uh, we have 40 hours. Learning to listen is a real skill. It's a real skill because you want to talk. Even when you're hearing, your mind wants to talk. And you have to kind of train yourself to really listen and not want to like, it's not even getting the next word in. It's just, it's a natural tendency. And other thing that we taught was if you're not sure what the person meant is ask back to them, Are you, is this what you mean? It's called looping. And it's a silly kind of word, but it basically says, do you, did you mean that we want to do this way on this street, if you're not sure? Or but it basically, it's a way to get feedback that verifies that you're understanding what that person is saying, what their wishes are. So the first question I had uh, was, what is the single most important duty of a council member? And I'm just going to read these. I want to go short. This one is to act as liaison between the public and city staff, listen, learn, make the best policy decisions on city issues. Number two is representing the best interest of the city and its citizens. Next one is setting policies and procedures. Next one is to listen to your constituents. And last one is to control the budget. So there's five people that just basically had that question and you can see that money is important. You can see that listening to the constituents is important that helping set policy and procedures is important. And I'll stop here. Policy and procedures are very important only if you have good ones, only if you know what they are, only if you follow them, and only if you get rid of bad policy. So setting policy is not, not a set it and forget it kind of a job. It goes on. And it's especially important with city councils when you have uh, people uh, change over, turn over, so that people know what those policies are. The next one, um, representing the best interests of the city and the citizens. And that really is why people get elected. I mean, everybody up here has a little bit of an ego because they wouldn't run for office if they didn't. It makes them who they are. They want to get things accomplished and like to see things better. 
They're the one that will put their hat in the ring and be uh, subject to public scrutiny and criticism and kind of be in a fishbowl. So they have that. Um, but again, it's the best interest of the city. That's why they're put there. Theoretically, that's why you're put there. It's not for the money. It's not for the glory. It's simply to uh, make the city and the city of Clay better as we do it down the road, meet the challenges. Uh, last one, to act as liaison between the public and the city staff, listen, learn, and make the best decisions on city issues. So you take those all together, and that's what this council, on short notice, said that the single most important duty of a council person is. Listen, set policy, make good decisions, be fiscally responsible. So that's sort of what I get out of that one. Um, anybody want to comment on that? That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. You guys did good on question one. Okay, question two was what one word describes the greatest strength as a council member? One was fairness, two was level headed, another one was common sense, another one was creativity, and one was negotiation. So at least three folks think they are level headed, have common sense, and want to be fair. One's creative, that's a nice thing to have on a council. And uh, one talks about negotiation. Obviously, these folks here come from different backgrounds, different strengths, different areas that they feel good about, maybe areas that they don't feel so comfortable about. So when interacting with the council, if, or any, in any, I'll say in any interaction, you know, everybody comes with a different set of skills, strengths, weaknesses, biases, if you will. And it's good to understand that that's OK, and you can listen. And then uh, present, if you have an argument, present the facts of your thing. And it's sort of like laying in your position without, um, with, with a neutrality that makes it open for people to discussion. If people shoot down an idea too quickly, that's not openness. Someone may have a good idea, may not bring it up if that's the, the feel of the uh, meeting. So it's important to, I think, just one, try to listen, recognize that people come from different backgrounds and bring different strengths to the council. And then, you know, I've seen a lot of councils kind of organized where people flow to their strengths and they don't always do just that. But if that's what they're good at, like any good organization, why not have them focus on those areas? But it takes a little bit of uh, working together to kind of develop uh, a rapport about how you act, when you act, what you should do, the proper way to do it. And you know, it's like Dr. Laura said, quite frankly, you know, just be nice about things. I mean, people are going to be uh, get heated conversations. I've done that. I was at a fire board meeting, and I had one of the board members come out afterwards and say, gee, i got to apologize to you because I really got out of line in there. And I'm pretty thick-skinned, so I, I didn't remember what he was. What would you say? I think we are talking about employee negotiations, which is frequently a, a hot issue. Anyway, um, I didn't even know what he was uh, perceived. His perception was he was out of line, and I didn't even see it. But, um, just think of the other person as, you know, well, I'll leave it at that. So we have a creative person, we have some uh, common sense people, and a negotiator. That seems like a pretty good thing to have at a city council. So how do you take those skills and give direction to staff to accomplish those things? You know, of course you have meetings, you gather information. Um, one of the things that I always told my city councils is to really, you know, Get your information. When in doubt, ask. And if there's a protocol, follow it. Uh, and again, that goes back to my thing, having good rules and, and following them. If you have good rules and ignore them, you get in a lot of trouble, uh, especially in the personnel area, uh, which I have a lot of experience in, in litigation and employees getting, you know, feeling bad about something. So the protocols are really important to know and then follow. And when you don't know, ask. And it should never be a, a situation where someone feels bad about asking a question or feels stupid about asking a question. Uh, you folks are all you know, part-timers, you've got your day jobs, um, you're in this for the, good, the right reason, and you want to get a good result. And so communication and then giving good direction, clear direction to staff is also very, very important. Um, anybody want to talk about that kind of creativity, negotiation, and level-headedness? Okay. Um, three, what word best describes your greatest challenge as a council member? When you said conflict, when you said resistance, 
Why well, you said public speak? Doesn't like to talk public. One of you said um, formality. I'm not sure what that means. And uh, patience. So that kind of tells me that uh, people aren't exactly um, comfortable with their strengths here. That they feel they have a little bit of a problem with their patience. Uh, formality, I'm not sure how that breaks. It could be it's too formal. Be, could be it's not formal enough. Uh, that there's not clear direction. That their people are talking over each other. That's another, you know, the Robert Rules word been around forever. I've never seen an entity use those with the effect of like, Sometimes they use what's called Rosenberg's rule of order. Those are a little shortcut. They're very good too. Uh, but the main thing is having the mayor of the meeting, everybody talking in turn, not talking over yourself. And when you're getting ready for your chance, trying to listen to the other person's input, whether it be from the council or from staff or the public. And again, it's a real tough thing. I, mean, I find myself in mediation wanting to jump ahead. The results kind of got. I want to get the work done. And I just have to pull the reins back and say, look, what is the person really saying here? And I have to reinforce it. What do they really want to do here? So I kind of understand them, their personality, and really what they want to accomplish. And then out of that kind of discussion, I always tell my counselors, you know, good information, discussion, additional information if you need it, more discussion, input from the public, a motion, a second, very important, not a vote. And then that's the way it works. All right. The next one, what is the single most important element of effective communication. And one person said listening, you know that, body language, congruence. Another one said listening, we got two listening. Listening open-mindedly, that's three, yeah. Uh, four, listening. Um, open-mindedness. So we have open-minded listening, 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 listening. So that's that's kind of good. You can all agree upon that. This, no one, I had this uh, questionnaire ahead of time. I kind of purposely sent it out late just to get people's uh, quick uh, comments on this. So you all know that that is an important thing for effective communication. Um, and open-mindedness leads back into having the appropriate protocol to discuss things, to have the right tone sometimes. Um, you can say things in a variety of ways, some of which are very neutral, some of which are very charged. And we can say, well, that's a crazy idea. Instead of, well, I've, I've never heard of that. Well, tell me more. There's ways to do that. You know, maybe it is a crazy idea. You think that. You don't need to say it. You know, you're in public here. We have uh, constituents. We have uh, other folks maybe uh, listening or hearing it on uh, video down the road. So it's important to kind of be, be a little more disciplined in the way that you approach the meeting. Um, when I go into court, I always have to write, slow down, be deliberate, just to get my mind in that kind of place where I'm going to try to not just wing it by the seat of the pants. And I'm not saying any of you do that, but I'm saying if you kind of come into here with a good um, idea that it's going to be a productive meeting, if there are things that you want to address, you have those uh, down. If there's any staff questions, they're asked ahead of time if possible. Um, I'm sure staff can answer them from the floor, but uh, I see people uh, get questions and it's kind of, it's, it's not as effective communication because they're on the spot and they didn't have a chance to maybe look something up. So um, I always would tell people, look, if you have a question to staff, you know, you can answer at the meeting. Sometimes the question comes up at the meeting. There's no other place to ask that question. The staff should be able to give you a good answer. At least say they'll look into it. But it's always better if there's a discussion uh, ahead. So, Basically, the person that is responsible for that area, be it fiscal or in the field, can, can, can give you a good answer. Uh, you know, everybody complains about long meetings. Um, I've been to a lot of meetings in my life, a lot of long meetings. Um, I don't mind if they're long, if they're effective and productive. So you guys have a pretty good consensus on that. Um, I think open-mindedness is very important. <coughs> Two of you said that. Any what, anyone want to comment on that? Number five, this is a little more complex because I made you use three words. And the question from the audience was, what three words describe how you'd like discussion of a controversial item to be handled? And you're here, you're going to get controversy. That's just the nature of the beast. 
Um, one person said, opinion, discussion, decision. Another person said, respectfully, patiently, and professionally. Another one said, fairly, calmly, and professionally. Another one said, stay neutral, not get personal, consideration. And that has consideration to the other council members, staff, and uh, the constituents. Equal participation and collaboration. The last one here was fair, respectful, and mature. So that's, again, quite a good consensus that people have that want that in their meetings. Um, so how do, you, how do you get there? Um, again, fairness, staying neutral, um, not getting personal. That comes out. It just does. And you kind of have to guard against it. And if you think you stepped over the line, you make your apologies and move on. At least that's what I, I've tried to do. It served me well. Um, but people are going to get heated. The people are going to get emotional about certain issues. And that just happens. It happens in the, in the audience. Sometimes you'll see it from staff. Uh, I had a, a member of my city that would just get red and start gathering up his binders if it wasn't going. He didn't like the way it was going. And a couple times he'd you know, knock the binders and he'd, he'd leave sometimes. And that was okay. He tried to control it, not always he could control it. Um, no eye rolling, and there's a lot of verbal and non-verbal communication. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've seen it in my city councils where um, there was various real, real clear non-verbal communication. And that's kind of pretty, that, that shows an open mind, that shows that, that person is not really listening to what is being said. I mean, sure it may be a little bit off the wall, but there's pearls there occasionally. Something really good you can use. But it's, it's like contempt prior to investigation. You don't let them, you know, say their piece, hear their piece, and maybe, you know, quiz them when you talk about collaboration. Well, what do you mean by that? Or have you thought about that problem that goes with that, that solution? That's right. Solution to the problem. But if you thought about this other way of doing it, and then the person that had the original idea, you know, it should be collab collaborative. It's the, the uh, uh, really the most important part, I think, of the way that this country work should work is the, the back and forth discussion. And people shouldn't be afraid of that, and that's why you have to have a good, you know, collegial atmosphere so that people can say what they want to say. And again, I urge people to get good information, uh, trust and verify. That's a good good rule. Uh, I've had council members in the past have ideas that were very one sided because they listened to one constituent. And I just I'd say, look, and this is a guy that I'm a friend with. I said, look, you can't, you know, paint yourself in a corner. You can say, hey, I'll look at it, I'll get some facts, and then find out those facts. Those facts may not please your constituent, but it's better than to give them the, the right facts after uh, achieving them than to uh, give them some false hope that they might be able to do something. Um, one of my councils, you can appeal anything to the council. That was just a rule. For citizens, they can appeal anything. So staff had no cutting off the knees protocol. And people came up with certain things. Um, they didn't always get what they wanted. So it depends again on what is your protocol. Follow your protocol, you'll have less problems. Uh, protocol is very important in a lot of areas. Um, I was a volunteer fireman. We didn't have a lot of protocols. You, know, you became an EMT and they put you on a uh, fire truck and said, don't put out fires and crawl in the car and put direct pressure on a wound. I went out to the bigger world, and I learned that protocols are there for a reason. There are re reasons to, to basically to operate safely, not to hurt other folks, to uh, be efficient, and all good reasons. Protocols were practiced, they were developed over time. And when they had the need to change them, you changed them. But protocols are good. It gives you some, you know, stay between the navigational beacons, you know, as uh, Alan Jackson says. It gives you some good way to, to judge, you know, how you're doing. Um, but it's an art. Uh, let me see there. Collaboration, equal participation. Uh, I think that would be, in my mind, not excluding somebody. Um, everybody should participate and not be felt that they can't participate. Uh, opinion, discussion, and decision. That's usually the way it works. And again, the uh, opinion maybe from staff or factual staff. Discussion among the uh, council. Uh, and then the constituents, of course, address the council, saying, well, did you think of that? 
or maybe you didn't think about this, or maybe there's another way to do it. Um, you know, letting everybody you know have that thing. But again, paying attention to them. I mean, there are some people that you probably want to tune out. You should not tune them out. You should listen to them because it just makes you a better listener for the person who really has some real good ideas. Um, I've been following Clear Lake even though I live in Kelseyville. Um, I own property here. My cousins grew up here. Um, and I have clients here. So I've been around this town and I've really noticed that it's, it's trying to get the critical mass going. Um, the Facebook public awareness page, whoever started that, it's a great idea. I see a lot of people wanting to do really nice things here. So it's really important that all that energy not be dissipated by um, council meetings or council directions that stall or involve personalities. It just is unfortunate because it's, it's a tough road to get to critical mass in any, in any city. If you're in a Bay Area, you have a problem. Atherton, you've got lots of money. Here, in Lake County, we don't. So it's really, really important to make yourself effective, use your resources effectively, because you don't have that much extra. You know, everybody can't have their own idea. Um, they can, but where are the resources to do all three things? So anyway, I'll go to the next question. Um, what are the three most immediate issues that face the city of Clearly? Financial, infrastructure, public safety. Um, public safety, code enforcement, economic development, and again, finances. Um, fiscal health, code enforcement, infrastructure. Okay. Fiscal responsibility to provide the citizens with basic services for quality of life. Number two, sustainability to maintain the staff within our means to scale down some of our spending and create new structure for greater efficiency. Increase our employment opportunities, create the infrastructure we have not had to maintain, excuse me. Increase our employment opportunities and create infrastructure we have not had to maintain a healthy city. And financial conflict with council members and employees, and then development. So a lot of those kind of uh, are development issues. Uh, you need the revenue issues, I should say. Uh, part of what the city manager does with the city council is decide when it's budget time where the money gets spent, how it gets spent, from a lot of competing needs in this town. Um, this is a, a 10, 10 square miles, I think, plus or minus. Um, a lot of road problems. You have uh, a lot of challenges, and uh, the recession, if you want to call it, has not been good. Even before that, it was tough. So it makes it all more important to direct those resources appropriately and have follow-up to make sure that you're, if you try something and it doesn't work, you go back and say, well, let's make an adjustment, make a mid-course adjustment. And again, good decisions, good, good decisions frequently come from a council that has good information, that has uh, some creativity in the council about ways to do things, because you're doing it with less dollars these days, and can have a real uh, good discussion, uh, maybe heated, or maybe uh, not heated, vigorous, strenuously arguing your point, but at the end of the day, you know, you're here for the citizens, you make your vote, vote your conscience, and then move on. Um, not this city, but another city. I was a guest city attorney for a while back in the 80s, and no one wanted to do anything in that city. They had a lot of options. They had some money, too, but it was just everybody wanted a project, and nothing really got done. They just kept kicking the can down the road. So I think in this environment and in this city, it's really important to have a, a rather sharp focus on what you can do what you can accomplish. Um, and then when you accomplish that, move on to the next thing. It's great to have a wish list, and that's a good thing for planning purposes. And I understand that you're doing some real good planning with uh, Cal Poly. That's quite a feather. You're sitting his cap. That's a great school, a lot of great uh, wine stand there. But anyway, so fiscal stability, uh, there may be, not there may be, there are differences of opinion. When I was on the Lakeport City Council, now, one, one fellow uh, who's not on the council was interviewed by the uh, League of Cities magazine in one of the conferences. And he said, roads, roads, roads. And that was his focus. And uh, when the budget came, they had a real discussion about where uh, it was our measure, uh, our money, I remember, where that money would go, roads, the community pool, for some salaries for, for people working on the roads. And it was quite a discussion about where to put that money. 
That was a scarce resource we had every year, but it wasn't unlimited. So we had to see what's the most bang for the buck. And, and sometimes uh, the information that came out, the factual information, was just counterintuitive counter about fixing streets. What streets you should fix or what, what streets you can't fix. And you can't fix and get any bang for your buck. So they have experts that tell you why these streets should be first, second, third. And it's logical to make sense. That doesn't mean that the political aspect doesn't come in and you can't make adjustments around that. But you know, having good facts and trying to stick with the facts, I mean, we have constituents that are really focused on one real problem and they may not see the rest of the problems. So you know, the interaction is very good. Uh, and it's always good to say, well, factually, this is what I understand from the report. And certain citizens certainly may challenge that, say, oh, that's baloney. We didn't do that in the old ways, or there's a new way to do it. And I think you should listen to that, too. Um, again, it has to be something that has some meat to it. I mean, it's not going to plant a Mars folks are going to have to fix our roads. I'm not going to listen to that. But if there's a way that's uh, out there, that other places have tried and succeeded, you need to kind of consider that. So what I guess I'm saying is that it looks like the fiscal allocation of resources is really an important thing to get into. It's important to dig into the budget to understand what the historical trends have been and what the most bang for your buck. Um, if there are ways that you can automate, automate things, I'm sure that staff will bring that to you. We'll bring that to you. Uh, I was down in Summit County, and they have a real interesting uh, border response. It's very different than, than Lake Kids, and that's because they have a lot of money, and they're, they're more ahead of it because they have the money. They can do certain things. I think I beat them. Uh, Conflict council members, boys. Again, with council members, you guys have I think, learned to get along yourself, at least at the council level, uh, <coughs> hopefully outside the room, too. Um, in employees, uh, again, you know, you have a city manager and there's a chain of command, and there's a chain of command for a reason, uh, much like the protocols. Uh, and, you know, employees can go beyond the chain of command, too. It doesn't go just one way. You can have a lot of people not understanding that concept, why it's there, or just thinking that it's not good, it doesn't work. Well, it works, it's there for a reason, and it often avoids duplication of effort or hard feelings. So, um, that's all I have to say about that. Anybody want to turn in? So, what three words describe what you want to accomplish for the citizens of the city in the next two years? Number one was financial stability and development. Uh, <coughs> trust, hope, and transparency. Fiscal health, code enforcement, public safety. Stabilize financial situation and planning, common goals and priorities. Stability, consistency, and confidence. And some of those say things in different ways, but I think you want consistency, stability. Uh, the fiscal health is very important to the council. Um, you want to go through it with trust. It's good to trust your staff. It's not good to trust your staff. If you don't trust them, it's not good. It's not good for staff not to trust the council, and it's really, really not good if the constituents don't trust that they're being heard, and the people up here, um, even though they may not do what the constituents or the people that speak at the podium want, that they're being heard and recognized, and the input counts, because it's a democracy, you know. Um, hope, uh, I think that's a good word. Uh, like I said, I think that this area has the best views, probably, of the whole lake. I was going down to the Olympic today, looking at the Kanakai from that direction. I see it from the other side. You know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, number three is, this one was transparency. Um, transparency is a, is a buzzword in the last uh, seven or eight years, I guess. Um, what does it mean? You just can't say it. It means that you, know, you get answers. It means that the people's, above, you did that. the people's work is done in open session, in public, in a respectful way. And it cuts both ways. It really does. Um, the audience may have very audience. The constituents, audience, whatever you want to call it, affected stakeholders, there's all these buzzwords. They may feel very, very strong about um, some issue. And they certainly have the right to voice that. And the electeds kind of have to take it. You know, kind of have to take it. Not where it's crazy, but they kind of have to, you know, if somebody gets fired about their roads, or some flooding, or some other issue, Maybe it's a public safety issue. Maybe it's a meth lab next to their house. You know, they're going to be they're going to be fired up about that. Um, 
But again, at the end of the day, be passionate without being uh, rolling your eyes, uh, going to sleep, texting on your, <laughs> on your phone. Uh, I don't think you've seen that. But there's a lot of things now where people don't listen. They don't have eye contact. They don't listen. They don't really try to see the other person's point of view. Or just think maybe the guy or gal had a bad day. You know, you don't know what everybody here or out there for that instance is, uh, is has, has going on in their life. Maybe something that's stressful. Maybe something that makes them cert certainly passionate. Um, we had a former city council member come in and uh, he gave a very impassioned, and, you know, he ended it with, if you don't do this, you'll, be all, you'll all be recalled and walked out. Well, it didn't happen, but, you know, he made his point. And uh, it wasn't beyond the pale. It was basically a very, very uh, concerned about this, this one issue, and he made that, made that known to the council. But at the end of the day, you are all citizens here, and you all, you all want what's best for it. And it's really tough because you don't have a lot of resources. So you have to keep those resources uh, now hopefully pointed in the right direction and no one's going to agree 100 percent that that allocation is correct or not uh, typically though the cities um, i think people <coughs> probably agree that you want to have a safe city you want to have a city where there's uh, good infrastructure and that's a that's a big project and where you can come into city hall and, and get answers um, and action and you may get answers Sometimes the action may not be as quick as you like because it's a, it's a stressful economic time for, for most California cities. So I just want to see if there's anything else there that in the last one. <coughs> Stability, <coughs> fiscal health, <coughs> uh, economic development, consistency, confidence, and uh, doing it basically with uh, Trust, hope, and transparency so that people feel good about be, doing this job as city council and uh, what, they can, what they can give realistically to the citizens. So I think that exercise showed that you folks do have a lot in common. Um, and so my recommendation would be, uh, would be to, to um, start fresh. I know there's been some antagonism. We just had an election that was uh, closely contested. Uh, and then think about what are you going to do to make the right better? And if you have to check your ego at the door, you do that. And again, not bad to have an ego. That's why you guys are here. If you didn't have an ego, you would you know, put your name in the, in the, in the bucket. Um, and learning to listen. I mean, that came out in two or three of these questions. How do you listen to somebody? You concentrate. If you don't understand, you ask them to explain themselves in a nice way. Did you mean that? Or is this the concept? And that person should be able to be not defensive and say, well, don't ask. Of course, this way you're supposed to do it. So you'd say, no, this is what I mean. Or, and that's where you have discussion. That way you have interchange. You have, uh, what was the term? Collaboration. And usually you get a better idea at the end result of that. So that, and that's all kind of a, <coughs> nice, nice to hear. It's just easier. It's harder, harder to practice. And again, the, with the, uh, the mediation training I had, I, I was amazed how hard it was for me, and I communicate for a living, to sit there and listen and really try to understand and make it neutral and not want to get right to my solution. Because I always want my solution. Because don't you know I've been doing this 30 years? I should know what's up. <laughs> it's not my deal. I'm there to facilitate what the people want. It's kind of like your role. What do they want? How can we do it with the resources? And how can I explain it? That's a transparency in the things. How do you explain to folks that this is why you're paying in this stretch of road and not this? When this stretch of road has been neglected for years, maybe you pass council said, we're going to pay it in you know, 2013. And you say, well, the report says we can't save that road. We've got to spend money here. This is an arterial, it's not a side street. You explain things. So the more you have uh, information available in this day and age, I, you know, a lot of cities, and what I've seen, um, just a lot of businesses, is if you can help the citizens help themselves by either uh, meetings being broadcasted or by a, a good web page where they can find things out for themselves and then you ask a question um, online, that's a neat way to maybe stretch your resources and you know, 
get some good uh, participation because if people participate, you know, they're going to be, they don't know what's going on. They're not going to have a complaint about transparency. Sometimes complaints about transparency are people that don't, they just come in at the last minute and then complain. And they're always going to have those people. But uh, they have a right to complain. But if they were part of this, the key to city council meetings, if they talked to city staff, if they had you know, questions or a suggestion box, that they, the more they participated, the more they had a feeling that, they, that things are transparent. Now, the law in California is pretty strict about you know, people's business being done in the public. Uh, lots of people want to think that that's not true, that the thing is done behind closed doors. Yeah, who knows? But uh, that's not the law. Thank you. So I, that concludes my seven questions um, and how you all kind of answered them. So I say that you guys have a, a lot in common, a good foundation to move forward with. And Steve did ask after each one if there were comments, but now that you've heard it all, to, to go around the table and each of you make any comments that you do have after having heard for the responses, the synopsis at, at the end, and um, maybe have some dialogue about that if appropriate. Well, so I think like everything that we can do in the city council since I started, it's a lot of stuff. It's not just any one facet. There's really a lot of different layers of information to look at. I think the biggest thing I got out of it is that as we're deliberating, the, the um, conversation can help us to evolve an opinion, <coughs> and then that will be kind of decision. direction to staff as a council but the challenge we're having is that once that's done one member of the council will go and attack that staff demean anything that has to do with that decision um, there was you know one one instance where we made a decision where the next day I got probably a dozen emails back and forth between our city manager and a member who was, you know, basically still ripping that decision apart, and even though the council had spoken. So, in that type of situation, what would you advise we do that will make uh, make things move forward smoothly and not hold any resentment? Because I find that to be an extremely challenging thing. That once we, as a council, make a decision, someone tries to tear that decision down. Please just stick on what decision that was, so we can. I'm, I'm trying to leave names out, so... Well, just what was the decision you're discussing? We're being vague here. So. Well, I'll just throw my two cents in, and just two cents, and that's all it is. Um, I've seen people, after a vote, want to clarify something with staff um, and ask a question, or maybe there was something that might merit a reconsideration of a decision. And if it's a reconsideration of the decision, then the rules allow for it. It's typically agendized with the request of that person, member of the body, saying, I want to reconsider this vote because of X, Y, and Z. Then there's a motion to take it up for reconsideration. If that doesn't get a second and dies, then there's no discussion of that issue. And then on that, um what would you advise a, a member of the council who, like you said in question four, to before coming to a public meeting, when you get your agenda or you're on an item, to discuss with the staff members, or either the city manager or if 
uh, she allots the other head department heads that issue before you come to public meeting so you don't have to throw everything out in the public meeting and your questions have been answered. Um, what happens if you already have a bad relationship with staff that you can't do that? What would you advise that person? Develop a better relationship with staff, quite frankly. Um, the reason I said that, doing your homework first, it just makes it a lot better. I've seen staff have cross-firing memos. That's not really good either. When staff is talk together about some project, and some planner jumps in and says, hey, wait a minute, wait about a minute, engineer, you can't do that, because there's this environmental concern, and they haven't talked before. And that's not good either. So it, it's essentially, I think, it's basically getting your facts down, and, you know, it, it, if you can't trust the uh, staffer, then you're kind of stuck. And then you have to go and basically um, I mean, tr it, follow the chain of command. And then if there's a problem that's persistent, I think, with, with anybody in the personnel area, that has to be you now come to the chain of command, too. And then hopefully, some resolution. Um, if your city engineer is not talking to council members or or return phone calls or whoever else is part of it. That may be something that city manager needs to talk about. Hey, you're supposed to be able to make yourself available. Or here's when I can be available. So uh, you gotta gotta work. I guess the, end of, the bottom line is you gotta work it out somehow. And hopefully you have a protocol if there's a real problem with I cannot get information from this whoever. That shouldn't happen. You might not get that information the day you want it, but you should get it within a reasonable time. Can I respond to that? Yeah. Okay. I've been in these situations since I've been on council now for nine years. Um, I've had administrators that we just we didn't click, we didn't get along. Um, but you have to learn to work with them. That's that's our job. We're, we're here for the community. We're not here because we like or dislike somebody. Um, you know, I made it very clear to the staff member that you know, even though we may not get along, we're here for a purpose and that we need to follow through on making sure that that purpose is accomplished for our community. It is not about our personality. I'm not here to be liked, I'm no offense, but I'm not here to be liked by my council or my staff. I'm here to get along and move our community in the correct direction. Of course, as a team member, we have to be able to be cordial and work together as council and staff. That's essential. But whether we're all gonna agree or not, we're, that's not. But one thing I made sure, that I've had administrators that I knew were doing things wrong. I still would go to them before the meeting and say, I don't agree with this, this, and this. I am going to make this public at a meeting and you need to be prepared for that to respond. That's how I handled it as far as I did not slam you know, him, him or her in the meeting. I made sure they knew what I found out and if we still disagree, I let them know I was going to do it in a public meeting, and they, I let them be prepared for that. So to me, that's how, whether you, you like somebody or not, or you disagree with them or not, it is still a staff member, council member situation, and it should be followed through. And to me, that should be a protocol that you take. That's the protocol I took. It worked out well, even though personality-wise, we didn't work necessarily out so great, but working together as a council staff member, that's how I handled it. And I thought it was the best way to handle it. Uh, just interject, it's, it's really bad being blindsided. Sided. <coughs> Either a staffer or a council member, it's not good. It's, uh, I think it's unprofessional. I think it shows some uh, mean spirited, spiritedness. It's unnecessary. Uh, it happens. Sometimes it happens it's because someone thought of it that minute. But uh, if it's a setup kind of deal, that's unfortunate. It shouldn't happen. That's all right. Yes, what do you say when you're, you know, if you, if we're in this situation, we're all adults. We all obviously have common wants that our city needs. We need to just take care of them. Work together. If you can't work together, find a council member you can work with. Or if you can't work directly with staff yourself, find someone you can. And we just need to get this job done. I don't know. There's nothing. That's 
where we start. Well, I just feel like we're beating around a big bush right now. And, um, I mean, we can pull that yellow envelope I dropped off at your office, I see in your folder there, and we can discuss the real issues going on at this table. We can be honest and cre create transparency and not sit around like we're just all so, uh, so sensitive and such good listeners. Why don't we pull that out of your folder and let's discuss the real deal here, what's really going on, and stop pretending like it's not going on because there's some ugliness going on, and it's called civil harassment, and I've endured about up to here with it. And I love this community. I'm very vested in this community. There's nothing I wouldn't do for this community. I put myself out on a limb for this community because I live here, my children live here, all my friends live here, and this is probably where I'll die. I don't want to live anywhere else. And being the mayor here, let's just get to the real deal. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing is having mediation, not a facilitator present some questions to see where the consensus is on how we feel about things so that we can answer it real pretty and make it look real good. Let's, let's break it down to what's really going on with this council. There's some major harassment going on here, and I'm enduring it. And I'm tired of enduring it. Okay, I'm going to stop much. right now. Were you not the one that told me that you did not want this to this be, to be, and this is, was no. one of the things. Let me no, you let me finish first. Stop. Why do I have to Stop. be interrupted when it's my turn to talk? Because I'm the mayor and I'm asking you a question. Before you continue on, were you not the one that came to me and said that you did not want this to be a beat up on Jerry situation? We're that not we beating were, up on Jerry. Jerry's if you, talk, if, if I'm you bring finally having a chance to talk about what's bothering me. And I'm gonna, this is supposed to be a chance to discuss what's really going on in this council so that we can move past it. Because I can't move past it when I'm getting emails like the ones that are in here. When I've been unseated for cleaning a break room, let's get real. I was unseated because I didn't agree with Major H. That's not and, it and at all, Jerry. And if you don't, if, if if you don't think that's true, fine. Here's also a letter that I had to send to you to cease and desist because you were telling people I stole things. I didn't have this. And I have the email right here where you did that. And I have several snapshots of Joey's uh, Facebook page where he goes on and on about me. And I have. Many emails, that were, there's a few missing, I guess, that I sent to you that you didn't print off. So that's the real deal. That's really the problem here. I can even get along with a cell if we're giving well, a chance, yeah. and I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you we better can. take it, get your... But the problem, no, but the problem I'm having is the process. I've had to literally send I'm Joey's nervous. mail to spam because of what he does. The, right down to the last one where he quoted and told me if I could read and sent me the link to the record fee where Mandy Fender again goes on. I know you think it's funny. It's not funny. This is affecting our city. It's affecting everybody in it. Agreed. And if we all want to move past it, then we need to address what's really happening here and stop beating around the bush. And that's how I feel about it. I'm not here to lie or to sugarcoat anything. There's a lot of stuff going on here that isn't right. And well, I haven't disrespected anybody. And uh, I haven't right. go on blogs and say terrible things about other council members. You wait, 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 when you unseated me, talking about you don't feel my apologies. You want to watch the tape together? I think that's what we should do is run the tape and, and look at the reality of what happened. It was horrible. Agreed. It was horrible and I didn't have it coming. I didn't uh, do anything that was unconstitutional. I expressed an opinion. I didn't do anything to be unseated. And it's not it funny, Joey. Joey. That's part of the problem. This is real. It affected my lives, my grandchildren's lives, my children's lives. It was horrible. And the things you do on the blogs and the emails you send to me are disgusting. That's why I, all your stuff is going to spam now. I don't want to see any more of your ugly stuff. I'm not into the ugly thing. You know, I like to make things beautiful. I really do. I'm the creative one. Oh, and that's why you got to restrain you. I'm the creative one. Shh, shh, shh. So, that, I enjoy creating beautiful things. And I'm very good at it. 
Yeah, I'm very skilled at it. I'm good at creating events that raise money. I'm very good at a lot of things that have to do with creativity. So that's how I am. But to to unseat me because I clean the break room, really, or because I ask questions when I'm signing checks, I have to sign something. I want to know what it is. That's part of being professional. I'm a businesswoman. And when I see, when I think that there's a lack of efficiency, I want to talk about it. <laughs> so I, th that's where the hurt's coming from. It's coming from what this gentleman is doing to me. It's coming from what this council said to me during my unseating. You know, in the 70s, I was a battered woman. It felt like that kind of a situation. I had to heal from it. I literally had to see a physician and heal from the abuse that I took and the verbally abusive personal things that this council said to me. And I'm being real because I am real. And I tell the truth. And this is my truth as I'm feeling it and I'm seeing it. I'm not angry. I forget you. I don't hold it against you. But this problem right here is the problem I'm having. He's laughing and snickering thinking it's funny and it's not. It had a horrible effect on my entire city. It's not funny. And, he's still and a grown-up wouldn't laugh. <laughs> And that's the problem. And, this and I've sent every harassing email to our city manager. Most of the time she doesn't respond. So I have no buffer. I have no way to even deal with the problem I'm having with harassment. So where do I start? So now we have this kumbaya. Really? It doesn't feel like that to me. It doesn't feel right. I haven't been on time to anybody at this table. Not once. I'm not here to tear anybody down. But what happened to me wasn't right. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. Are you done? Because those other council members said that want to make to talk to you. So are you are you completely finished? Before I let him move on. Okay. Okay. Council member Lewis. You know, I, I apologize because my defense in this repetitive ridiculousness is if you don't find something semi humorous humorous about that, you start behaving angrily, and you know, with anger, and, and, you know, to sit here and say that I'm a happy person, I'm not angry, while well, you're taking an angry tone, I just find that to be, that proves the point right there. There's no problem on this council, there's no problem on this council. Joyce and I, and Joyce doesn't agree with me, she doesn't agree with me staying right now. Steve, do you have the last emails that I sent you? I don't. I'm speaking. I'm out. speaking. No, we're not going to go I'm here. speaking. Thank you. We just talked about that. And see, that's part of the problem. We just talked about that. And then you do exactly what you just told, we were told not to do. So there's no problem. You know, we can work together. Joyce and I have had differences. We work together fine. Gene and I don't see eye to eye. We work together fine. Denise and I work together fine. You know, there. There's one common denominator here that has continued to have this mockery go on, and we all know who that is. And I was trying to be respectful and not go direct, but we all now know what that problem is. Joey. Yeah, Joey. Speak. Uh, okay, so this is exactly what we said was not going to happen, mm -hmm. was that we are here to figure out how we're going to be able to work together and, and move forward. And, and it's unfortunate it that you, the one that came to me and asked, I'm not pointing at you, I'm using my hands, I said, and asked that we not do this is the one that's bringing it up. I'm not quite sure why you asked me to make sure this didn't happen to you, but then you're the one that's bringing it up and wants to bring all this stuff out. Excuse me, I never... If you don't get along with Joey... I, that's your personal thing. I'm being and harassed by Joey. Then I'm not, that's the problem. Then, then, then that's a simple thing. By Joey. The council can't do anything about that. Well, she that's the problem. Should. I don't have a problem. And, and that to me is what I see harassed. is a problem. All that, the way that around. I'm being harassed and I'm complaining Not about being it? harassed. Is that you have still, to this day, not seen that. We've all contributed here in, in some way, shape, or form of maybe not some uh, appropriate or maybe stating some things that uh, maybe are hurt your feelings or your feelings or your feelings or something. We all do that. that that's, it's, just, it's just talk. 
But what we are here to do today is figure out how to move forward, work together, whether we have difference of opinions or not. Don't be harassing. Don't be snickering. Don't be rolling our eyes. I think that was one of the things that was, was said here, is that we need to be professional. We need to know that we all have difference of opinions. Um, if it's something that's personal, um, you know, that's between you and me or you and Joey. That's a personal thing. That's not something that the council can do anything about. Um, I followed your wishes. I haven't said anything. I didn't tell anybody anything. That was, in my opinion, between you and me. That didn't have to be public. You chose to make it public. That's your thing. What are you even talking and about? About what you just did here tonight. I want to talk about the truth. No, this you want to talk to about mediation. No. your truth. No, yeah, that's right. I want to talk about what brought us to this table. What, where did the problem start? I want to start from the beginning of where the problem started because you can't solve a problem if you can't figure out how you got there. We are sitting at this table because I was unseated. That's why we are sitting at this table. At the conclusion of that meeting, we were told we were going to have mediation. We're having it. You cannot have mediation if you can't speak openly and honestly. You want to have mediation, but I'm no. not allowed to talk? No. That's what you're telling me. You're telling no, me. No, I'm not. This is mediation, but I'm not allowed to talk. Why is I was trying to honor your wishes about this meeting, but if you don't want to do that, then it's going to be an open meeting. I keep saying that. I never said that. It's you did. To be, we are you said, to I don't want it to be a Jerry bashing thing, but you're We're also bringing Jerry. it back we, to what happened. Excuse me. Alright, stop, 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 stop. Go ahead. I just want to make things clear. I, I have mediation training. I didn't come here to be a mediator. That's a little different process. What I came to share was just my experience in facilitating good council meetings, good government, good communication. Based on my experience in my fire district job, my job as city attorney, uh, my job working for uh, public agencies over 30 years. And it just goes, I mean, we talked about something. Uh, I'll just say emails. Emails to me are often misused, they're often done in haste, and then they're there. You can't retract them. You say something, somebody else thinks I understood, and it didn't mean that. Uh, emails have to be mean spirited and hurtful, and there. So I tell my clients, be careful when you get sick. Just because it's it's problem. Well, it's too easy to do sometimes. Uh, I've done it. I had one for this one with a dog. And I we went back <coughs> talking about what to call this first developer owner. Someone had put a word in complimentary. I sent that to you. He goes, Where'd you get the first? Uh, oh, so that was the end. So um, gotta be careful about that. Rolling the eyes, not not making eye contact. Uh, I've seen a lot of different disrespecting kind of things done in meetings. And no one likes it, so don't do it. But at the end of the day, you know, mediation might be framed differently to get a result between the two parties or however many parties are involved. You know, I'm not here to be a mediator. There's not basically just, like I said, share what I know. If it's helpful, fine. If it's not, that's okay too. Um, I, uh, when I saw this come up, I sent Joan an email saying, hey, if I can help, I'd like to try. That's how she got my name. Period. What I want to do here today and, and in the future is really focus on myself. I want to sit and look within me and say, okay, what did I contribute to this? What did I do that I could have done differently? And what will I do differently in the future? And I, I really believe the only person we can change is ourselves. We can have it out here. We could. And we may never come to an agreement. But the fact of the matter is, I did some things wrong. You did some things wrong. You did some things wrong. No one here is not culpable in some way for the situation because every situation is a response to what happened. Somebody does something, somebody else does something else. The culmination of that is the situation. So here we are, we're in it. And I'm going to say to you, Jerry, I shouldn't have said what I did in response to some of the things that, some of the ways that I was feeling. I should not have told you that I wasn't feeling your response, and I apologize. So, I'm 
just asking everyone here to do the same thing. Look into yourself and say, hey, for me, a lot of what he's saying here, I really think, honestly, we have to just drop it. We're never, ever going to agree with each other. Some of us aren't ever going to be friends. That's unfortunate, and that's the fact of the matter. And I, I think that at this point, we all need to drop it. It just needs to be done now, and we need to take the step into tomorrow. And this is, I think, where we can become, we can gain a common understanding of what next week's meeting is going to look like, of what the next time after that is going to look like, so that we start to build a commonality that becomes a rapport, that becomes a team. And then all of a sudden, maybe we can be friends. But really, the truth of the matter is we need to be able to work together up here, up there, for the best interest of all of these people sitting out here, all of those people back at home, our children. So if we can drop it, I'd appreciate that. I, I think that's going to give us the best result here. And really focus on faith. Based on what we've heard today, how can we move forward together? So for me, I definitely I was the one who was having trouble with the formality. I am more conversational and uh, bubbly than, than this um, requires. And so I'm going to be working on being a little more formal, um, really thinking and being disciplined and deliberate. I like what you said when you said, be deliberate about what you say. So I really want to be deliberate about what, my, what I say and make sure that my words and my whole communication is getting across the point that I want. And it's never to disrespect anyone. And I don't mind being called on that in a respectful way. Hey, that seems pretty disrespectful. Did you mean it like that? And most of the time I didn't or I'll say I did. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is this is do you have anything else you want to add to this? No, I'm allowed to talk on the city. Don't don't get like that. I mean, that's the that's attitude that that is I want to talk about what the truth okay. well, then you you, if I truth. tell you the truth then you tell me not to say it. No. And if I spill my gut, you say stop. What do you want, Joyce? You're yeah. in control. No, you what don't want I me want to talk, is, I'm not gonna talk. If I don't talk, you say, Well there you go. If you're doing it to me and you don't see that, even when I was sharing as the mayor, you were constantly side calling me. And I would say, Joyce, stop. Now we're at the table. You're telling me when to talk, when not to talk, what to say and when not to say. Say so anything you want, Jerry, right now. Say it all. Let's just get it out. You've I agree be in with control. you. Get now, I don't have to be in control. You want me to tell you your problem? I mean, if we're going to start bringing this up, we can really just bring I it up. I thought we were working on ourselves on this. Well, then that's what's going to happen. I thought we were working on that. So if you want to talk, say it now. Nobody's stopping you. I asked you a question. I asked you a question. If you want it to go this way because you had asked me. Well, I was talking, you cut me off, so I'm finished. Okay, well, then I'm going to say what I'd like to see at our meeting. <laughs> I'd like, to, I'd like to say what I'd like to say. One, leave your personal opinions at the door. This isn't the place for your personal opinions, whether we like each other, don't like each other, or whatever. This isn't the place for it. When you walk in this door, this is to do city business, and city business only. It's not what happened outside of this. It's not what happened in your personal life. It's city business. You need to leave it at the door. You know, I mean, you can't be bringing in how you, how I feel about Joey if I get mad at him. I mean, there have been times I've been mad at Joey. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And uh, but you know what? Once we get here, it's it's, it's there. It, it doesn't go any further. I've had outright fights with Ralph Brown at meetings, and you know what? When we walk out, it's there. We don't we don't bring it out into the council meetings or into the public of of what what happens here is politically is political. It shouldn't really be interfering, and that's why I hate the most about when people can't leave it political as political and, and your personal life as your personal life. You know, it should just be left that way. So I say, when we come to our meetings, how we feel about each other or whatever, we're all here. I know that we're all good people, and we're all here to do the same. We want to see our community become a better, prosperous community. We're all here to work for, for the community, not just one of us, but all of us. We all ran for a reason. We ran because we want to see and we want to help support. And we all put our lives out there, our personal and everything. I don't think anybody doesn't know something about all of us. None of us are perfect. You know, I think we need to move on and we need to just stop this. We need to not make the smirks. We need to not do the gossips. We need to not do the emails. 
drop it all. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to accomplish anything by uh, uh, rehashing and rehashing and rehashing. I think we did that before. Uh, I don't know what it is that um, we can do to move past this and be productive in the city and make, you know, uh, be able to go and speak to staff, uh, you know, and get information and come to a city council meeting and discuss things and move on and make the right decisions for our community. We're all here for the same reason. We just have difference of opinion, but as we can see, we have tons of common goals for our community, all of us. So, you know, to me, it's like we need to move forward, and that's what we need to do. I agree. We need to say this is it. This is where it is. And if you've got something to say, now is the time I say to say it. Let's get it over tonight, and let's be able to move on to 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 our meetings and do what we're here to do, and that's do better things for our city, do better things for our citizens. So it, now is the time. If let's get it over with tonight. So if you've got something to say, I say, say it now. I have a little something. It's not about hashing anything out, but I noticed the room is quite filled this evening. I want to work on getting this room filled for regular meetings, not just deceiving or mediation or the big drama fests. I want to see this room filled with our community that wants us to do something. Nice. Okay. Anything else? No. Then I don't want to hear you didn't have an opportunity. Joyce, why are you recommending me? I'm not. I'm just saying if you oh, want to do it now. Do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say? Well, I don't want to hear about it later. Why are you talking to me like this? I'm not your child. I'm your equal. That was tough for Dad to agree. You that I ask if she has anything to say that we can leave it here tonight. Yes, she has anything to say You're tonight. Get it over with yeah. tonight, yes, and did. let so that we can leave it here tonight and move on. Yes, Joyce. That's what I'm asking for her to do. Say what she has to say did. tonight, and move on with our life and our city business. Now, so if there is, if that is being rude and mean, I am very sorry. But we cannot continue to do this day after day and meeting after meeting. Okay, I'd like we to need talk to do this. Now and give you a break. Um, we don't do this day after day. Since it happened, there's been no discussion amongst us about what happened. I haven't had a chance to say how I felt. It took me a month to even uncurl from what happened to me. And it wasn't right. And if it happened to you, you probably would have run. And, yes, I want to work productively, but you just can't move forward after something like that without discussing it. And if I'm trying to discuss it and you cut me off, that's another signal. Like, you just don't want to hear about a huge mistake that was made right here in this room. And it was a big mistake. It should have never happened. And I believe our city manager should have navigated us through that without that ever occurring. And it seems really weird to me that when we have our quarterly report this last uh, meeting, we didn't even have a police officer in here. We didn't have one head of staff in here, but to unseat me, every head of staff, every employee was sitting here to watch. And you even got the attorney to sit here. And that really was upsetting to me, because we don't even have that kind of crowd on a regular night. It was like, get rid of her. Get her out of that mayor chair. She's not supporting Major H. She's poor leadership. And that's what happened. That's the reality. Whether anybody at this table wants to speak the truth, or however the truth is you see it. You know, at the League of Cities convention, they talked all about the duties of a good city manager. And when you see that your council is getting along, which I feel from the beginning, Joan, one of the first emails I ever got from you was to drive a wedge between the council members. And we've discussed it, so I won't bring it up. But it was out of line. And I truly believe that um, part of the council's problem has been directed from that point on. And I truly believe that when you saw the council having a little roughness before, when, when on the 8th and the, and, and the council meeting ended where I wasn't supporting Major H and all of a sudden we need new leadership and Joyce was telling me, I'm tired of you accusing me and, and so, she accused me of accusing her of something but I never knew we, we I didn't, you can watch that. 
Yes, that's what you said, but that tape was destroyed, so we can't listen to what really happened at the end of that meeting, unfortunately. So, um, but I, I discovered through going to uh, the League of Cities that a good manager would have called for a retreat. Now, a retreat doesn't cost money. You can do it at the park, you can do it at somebody's house, but when you saw that the council was having those issues on the 8th, I feel that you should have called a meeting, a retreat, and discussed how you, we wanted our council meetings to run. What was it that was all our common denominators? I feel, let me finish, please. I feel that you had the opportunity at that point to detour what happened on the 22nd when I was unseated. You're the one with all the power. You're the one spending time with each council member every week. You had the ability to turn that train wreck around. And I feel that you failed the city when you didn't because it has had an impact on us. If you read the staff report going into that meeting, I did, I did, it right I did recommend a workshop. And I have the right here not to do that. I realize that. And I don't have the control. But to you, overrule you the could council. have done it before the meeting on the 22nd. When you saw us in that much trouble, what you did was assemble all the staff, six police officers, and an attorney. Now, you had enough time to assemble all those people to have me unseated, but there was no time in that two week period that you could have had some kind of counsel for us or mediation to prevent that from happening? Good city managers would have prevented that because that was non-productive. It was a big negative for this city. Because whether you like me or not, or whether anybody at this table likes me or not, my community, I have a lot of friends here. And I'm very established here. So I have a support system and I've developed my own out of necessity. Because when I have total harassment and foulness coming in at me, there's no support system within this city for me. Now you can respond. You finished my thought. Well, clearly I, I don't agree with that. I have spent a tremendous amount of time meeting with you individually, as I do with all the council members, and I do provide that support. I did recommend that there be a workshop to do exactly what you just described. The council as a whole, maybe not unanimously, opted not to do that. I don't have the control to change that. I did do those things prior to those the meetings. I did not assemble a group of staff to come to the meeting. Any staff can, can come to any council meeting if they want. We did have indication that, there, that we should potentially have additional presence in the room for, um, from, from law enforcement. A good city manager would do that, and any city manager would tell you that. If you have indication prior to a meeting that there may be reason to have law enforcement there, you will have law enforcement there. Um, that's, I guess that's my response. I have, provided, I have provided opportunity for every council member to be in my office, and I devote a tremendous amount of time to each one of you. I just want to respond because we are in a conversation. I'm not trying to be rude, but I'd just like to respond for a moment because Joan and I are in a conversation. I would like to finish our conversation. It's okay with everyone at the table. I emailed you prior to this meeting, and I said, it's not even agendized correctly, Joan. There's nothing in this that says anything about unseating me. It says, consideration of appointment of mayor for the remainder of the calendar year. But there was no, barely any discussion of reappointment. It was all about me and my misbehaving by cleaning a break room. I have the CD right here. You can watch it right now. I did so it, it was, was not, directed by the council. But it was by the, I, directed by the council? Yes. I did. Well, the council said, I remember Joy's exact words, we need new leadership. So, um, it's on this agenda, it doesn't say anything about that. So I don't even feel it was agendized properly. And I don't know why, because if our, our community comes out, you feel like you need police protection in here? You think we need a huge police presence because the community comes out? Because they're concerned? And they're trying to <coughs> redirect to council people they voted for? You think that needs police presence? Because I don't. I'm very comfortable with the room full of my community. Matter of fact, that's when I'm the most comfortable. 
They put me in this seat. And these are the things we need to discuss as a council. What really happened here and what I'm really enduring. And let's, let's start on the agenda because I had questions on that. It was that same thing. Um, it was actually transcribed exactly how it was at the meeting on the basis because I had questioned that also. Melissa had to go through and actually transcribe word by word of what happened at that council meeting and this at the end of the discussion of council, this is how it ended up. Unfortunately, that was how it ended up. Well, then we all brown act it because that isn't what happened at that meeting. We didn't brown act anything. You can only, you can only, you have to stay on topic. I was just going to point that out. What are we doing now? This says, Workshop on Council Consensus Building. What are we doing right now? Are we talking about building a consensus? We're not. I'm talking about what, why we're sitting here. I'm sure you don't want to discuss it. It was I'm pretty just, nasty. I'm I'm just trying I'd to like to discuss it because because we're not. It out. We're I, not. I feel like we need to discuss what really happened. Okay. Why are we not allowed to discuss so it? We need to agenda well, that. that. Hashing things out on the agenda. Not council consensus building. That's what we're supposed to be discussing right here. I guess the meeting's over. We're done building consensus. If, if we're talking about staying on topic and we're talking about not violating the Brown Act and we're talking about doing those things, no matter what we I need talk to about, stay on topic. To stop me from talking about it. And that's fine. We won't talk about what really happened here. Maybe what really happened for you is one thing. Closed session happened for me, and I can't talk about that. Hurry your lips back now. So let's just. Let's just you know do that. Okay, I'm going to end this. Okay, we're going to end this. Obviously, this is important. You need to talk to the board. So we're going to end this. Meeting's adjourned. Meeting's adjourned. I knew this was good. Happens public 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 all right. This whole thing, as I told you, I didn't think this was ever going to work. You're not going to change behavior. You can see what just jumped out of the thing. That's horrible. If you're embarrassed about what they did to you, you should be embarrassed of what you did to yourself. If your children, I'm talking, you do a lot of blabbing, you talk about you're not angry, you always yell at everybody. Yeah. Once again, we do the same thing. You don't have any manners. You haven't had any proper upbringing, probably.
are you going to build a relationship to move forward? Because what you guys did, what happened with you two, clearly divided all of us. Have you stopped the emails? It did. Okay, he stopped the emails. The request was honored. Since when? This morning? This morning? Really? I've read them. They're nasty. I've never heard a public figure speak the way that you have spoken. You can say what you like about me, I don't care, but it's not going to fix this city. No one's going to vote the same, no one's going to do anything and work together. No one's going to re-elect any of you. It's ridiculous. Stop this. Stop! There's nothing left for you to say. You can't beat this. Okay. You, All right. You, yeah, we got it. Okay. Yes, okay. My name's Gina Bazzoni, and as Joey says, I don't matter. Because I don't live in the city. I supported you, made it known I supported you, voted you into office. I regret that at this moment. I like all of you. I liked all of you. The liking part is really fading. I may not live in the city of Clear Lake Joey. I'm a very strong participant for it all. Okay. You know what I'd like to do is that we did not be the personal thing here. I mean, but it is. It is, personal. It is. When I contribute to this city the way in which I do, not asking for any pats on the back and to be told via email, I don't matter. It matters. You're reprimanding her for what she's saying and she's doing. Have at it. Whatever she's done wrong, reprimand her. But do the same to him. He called exactly. everybody their names. He attacked us. He just got done saying out of his own mouth that he can't do that to the city, right? He's a he's a community member. He's a citizen. How do we recall? Okay. Why don't we matter to you, Joey? Why don't we matter to you? Okay, stop, please. Listen. Um, what a council member, whether it's Joey or any of the rest of us, do on a non-council member, personal, email, uh, Facebook, uh, any of that stuff, which I have asked Joey and Jerry has requested, so but we've done all we can do. The reality is you guys got to realize that we don't have control of any one of our personal lives, and if it's not coming from a city computer on city time, this council doesn't have the right, I have to say, to um, personally reprimand him for something he does on his personal time, or she does on her personal time, or I do on my personal time. You know, Jerry put in a request, I put in a request. Uh, it's up to Joey whether he honors it or not. Hopefully he honors it, and, and that this all stops and, and that we continue. I honor Jerry's request, but that's what we do. I mean, that's what I feel like I do. Um, you know, we all get angry and we all do say things, and sometimes we regret those sayings. I mean, I know I have. Uh, I think we all have at times. So, um, you know, but that's the situation here is um, what a council member does personally. Does the council but it is a reflection all. of the city and it the is, council. It and, and, and I how do you expect to move forward? Unfortunately, though, yeah. we, we as a council have no jurisdiction over what. He does or she does personally. Who does? So, so the request has been put in. He says he's going to honor it. Hopefully, this will end. You all hear that, so you're going to honor it. Something? Absolutely. As we were getting up, he was saying horrible, foul things yeah. right at this table. Exactly. Did anybody hear that? And you'll see him when he leaves. Yeah. As he was laughing and saying foul things to me, a foot away from it doesn't, the city clerk was saying foul so things right, right at this clerk. table in the, the city council right in the city hall yeah. two seconds ago. The meeting was adjourned. Yes, Nobody said he was in the city hall and in this council. Someone He was saying. Horrible, foul things. And you all want me to move forward and just kumbaya and act like we can work as a team while we I think have we're a public comment right now. So, I mean, I need to direct it back. Is there anybody else that wants to make public comment? I haven't heard Joey say he's sorry for you. I've been having one of your emails. Every one of them. And a lot Sir, of you were just asking me to go time. outside with you. Right. Yeah, I want to talk to you. We yeah. got to, I know you, Joe. Yeah. You don't even remember me. But I know you. <laughs> okay, we got to have a stuff here for the last couple of comments. Now, the majority of you people here think Jerry's 
to accomplish. Now, all five of you, you have a mission here in the St. Clair Life. But so, what is your mission? It's like if you have something to work on, you're busy working on to accomplish what your mission is, that you do not have time for this. My name's Janice Douglas. I live and work in this city. I own property in this city. This city's a joke. I have sex since I've moved here, literally. On the second week I was here, I went to the DMV, and all I heard about was the joke of the elected officials. She's right. I would never let my children behave like the people at this table. Ever. There would be a timeout chair and every single one of you would be sitting in it. You have to, it's over and, and it's done and you all have to get along. You don't have to like each other, but you do have to get along. We put you there. If you can't get along, there's the door. We can elect somebody else. So. You don't get to sit and laugh at others because feelings are not right or wrong. They just are. Jerry's feelings aren't, aren't wrong because they're her feelings. And people don't get to stand up and be mean to other people because I think that's called bullying. And at this age, we certainly should know better. And at that age, we certainly should be learning better. But I never spanked my daughters, and I have three functioning members of society. But if you were my children, I'd beat you all for the way you're behaving. And I'm sorry, I have a lot that because it's so true. I, it's yeah, true. I wasn't doing it to it's, be I'm not, I, I understand, Joyce. I'm, okay. Joyce, I'm not mad. Uh, because, because it's true. So is there any other public comment? Because I don't want to really just end this because I think this is where it needs to be. Um, I think we all need to work on each other, uh, on ourselves. I, I agree with Gina. I think we need to look within ourselves and, and try to move forward with this. Um, either you're going to move forward, and if you're not going to move forward in, the, in a positive way for the city council, I agree. If you can't, join the team, because we all run meetings differently. It had nothing to do with you running the meeting. It had nothing to do with the way you vote. That had nothing to do with any of our decisions. It wasn't, that wasn't it. That's what you're feeling, and I respect your feeling that, but that sure wasn't what I wanted and that's not what I've heard from the other council members that they had anything to do with the way you voted on anything. It had nothing to do with it. You had every right to support any measure or vote however you want. I respect that solely that each one of us can vote the way we want because hopefully there's somebody out here in our community that we're voting that way for. That's why we're all sitting here because there's five different opinions here and there is probably 5,000 of each one of us that has an opinion out there that somebody supports our opinion and probably five or 10,000 that don't support our opinion. That's politics. But we still have to. And once a decision is made by the council, you know, I've always, there's lots of times that council members have made a decision that I did not actually support or vote for. But once that decision was made, I was like, this is the council's decision and this is what I go by. That's it. That's you. you know, and that's, that's, that's a team player. Whether I agree with the team or not, it doesn't matter. Team players, once a decision, is called democracy, and that's what our country is built on, and that's why we have five members, and that's why it takes three to vote something through. Excuse me, are you telling me what, now let me just make this clear, since we learned this in our facilitation. You're telling me that it's a democracy, and you also said that if I don't vote the way the council does, if they vote a certain way, then that's the way I go. That's what yeah. you just said, correct? I'm saying that as a council at whole, once a decision is made as a council, we should be supporting that decision. Decisions are made that I did not vote yes on. See, but once it's whole. On There's some things that they feel unethical to me, 
a wrong to me? Well, if they're unethical, there's a difference between unethical and illegal. There's some things that feel unethical to some people. And if it doesn't feel correct to me, I don't care if you and you and you and your mother votes for it. If I don't feel comfortable with it, I'm not going to. That's me. Yeah, that's so we're you. different. So, and that's right. That's exactly right. We're different. This is how I, I work. And this is how I feel. But you can't expect me to feel the way you feel or you can I don't expect you to feel the way you feel. You just expected me to. No, so I just said. said.